Joining us now via telephone is Libora Soshoma, a legal practitioner, to help us make sense of the dissect, if you please, the extension of the lockdown by President Buhari. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. We looked to the presidential address to bring clarity. Did this happen in your opinion? Hello, Hello. I said the president's address, we all looked to it to bring more clarity to the way forward. Did that happen for you? Um, I, I knew uh, that they were going to extend the, the lockdown. Because if you look at um, the approach of of other countries that are even better, uh, better prepared, you know, it's still the same method. I call it the Chinese method that everybody is using: sit at home, sit at home. And so, when um, I looked at the, the numbers in Nigeria and the increase, even though also we have been able to curtail and discharge some persons, and I see the numbers keep increasing. I just knew that uh, they were going to extend, but just that I expected uh, uh, much more uh, from 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 the president. I I didn't expect to after all of these two weeks, the president is saying that they are putting in place an economic plan. I would have expected that by now they should have an economic plan. So tally with um, the, the lockdown, knowing fully well that it wasn't going to go away soon. All right. Because if some of us know that it, it was going to continue, then uh, they, they at, the, at the center of the entire issue should have known better. All right, let, let's uh, look a bit. I'll ask you generally to speak on the palliatives that was outlined. We know that he has added one million more vulnerable to the number already um, attended to, according to him, and uh, plus other palliatives that he mentioned. Is this promise enough? Is it going to check some of the uh, increasing cases of violence and robbery that we're seeing? That, that's why I... I said that I expected them to have uh, an economic plan. Because the, the palliative that they had given so far, you saw the huge crisis that it generated, even with the one they said they have shared. And, and so I would expect that the president would find a way of answering some of those questions that, that came up in the, in the, the way the palliatives were handled. There have been allegations that it was shared to only IDP. Even, you know, the identity of majority of the people that got these palliatives is still unknown. Nobody is aware. Nobody has come out and say, yes, this is what we got. Secondly, as we talk now, what is the plan for the small scale and medium industry, the SME? What's the plan for them? There are so many people, by this month, they will need to pay salaries, whether there is work or not. What is those plans? As we speak now, uh, what do you call it? The power holding companies are distributing bills. What is the plan for people who are using estimated billing system, even in offices that are shut down? What is the plan for those people? How are they going to get money? So that's why I said there is basically no economic plan apart from this one track minded issue of who we'll shut down. As we speak now, a lot of, in AJJ, arm robbers are raiding houses. Yesterday, vehicles were attacked and food stops, vehicles are delivering food stops. Food stops were hijacked by hoodlums. All of these are issues that we need to also, the government need to put concrete plans in place to address. 
because even in if you go to um, America, as we speak, they are attending. They are giving palliative to both the documented and the undocumented immigrants, not just the citizens. But here, we don't even have records of the citizens, not to talk of... Um, so the palliative, the one million palliative in a country of 200 million people, where almost 65% of the persons live below $1 a day. So 3 million people, or 3.5 million people, you will agree with me, it's a drop in the ocean. Okay, if, if, you, are, if you are not happy... Laborious, if you're not happy with the palliatives that has been, you know, announced, um, does it mean you're thinking it would be a, a good idea to release this lockdown so people can actually go out and earn a living? Because look at it however you like, it might be practically impossible for the government to get to everyone. Yes, I agree with you. That is why let the state government run this program. So I can't just criticize without having an alternative. The alternative is the federal government should be the one to liaise with the state government. I have consistently maintained this position. The state governments understand the crisis in their state far better than the federal government. Let the state governors that understand us at the center of this crisis let the state government, the federal government liaise with them. The resources needed should be handed over to the state. The state now knows where and where and how to lock down. Look at Quara State, for example. They didn't lock down the entire Quara State, but they locked down offer. They were specific in areas. So as not to fight one virus and then create a hunger, a hunger virus and then crisis, economic crisis. So this blanket lockdown from the federal government, but especially when there is no economic plan to address the attendant consequences in a poor country like us, Talking will about, not work. Okay, talking about consequences, uh, there's been reaction plenty of it since last night. One of them is from the People's Democratic Party. Let's listen to... Um, um, a comment by the publicity secretary, Kola uh, Olobadion, and then we'll be back with you, please. The People's Democratic Party has described Monday's COVID-19 pandemic speech by President Muhammadu Buhari as very disappointing. The party says the speech, just like the pre-recorded broadcast of March 29, 2020, failed to address salient issues of urgent concerns to Nigerians in their daily struggle against the spread of the plague in our country. The party expressed sadness that Mr. President again failed to show leadership and display total lack of touch with reality as he failed to give any hope on palliatives to the ordinary Nigerians as they face hunger and economic pangs of the lockdown. It is more painful that President Buhari could not address the immediate needs of the people or provide a trajectory that will take care of their future. Instead, Mr. President bored our nation with a rehash of global data that are already known to Nigerians, in addition to promises that are far-flung departures from the harsh realities on the ground. Nigerians expected Mr. President to directly address the established failures of his palliative distribution, particularly the provision of funds to the poorest of the poor, which has been marred by allegations of corruption and diversion of funds. This is in addition to allegations of diversion of rice and other items meant for the poor masses. Can Mr. President claim not to be aware that not a handful of Nigerians have received any palliatives and that the majority of our citizens are complaining that they have not been reached with any panacea, despite his administration claim of having reached 2.6 million households? Announcing the expansion of the palliative scope to 3.6 million without addressing the failure of the scheme and with no parameter to showcase the declared expansion is an encouragement of the corrupt system that has been depriving Nigerians. The PDP challenges Mr. President to disprove Nigerians by publishing documents showing the beneficiaries of the, of the claimed 
2.6 million household social intervention. The benefiting communities as well as the parameters that will be deployed for the additional 1 million households. Our party holds that what have been witnessed in the last two weeks is the total incapacity and fraud by those he has currently charged with the responsibility of taking palliatives to the people. Already, there are serious agitations and unrests in Lagos Ogun and some parts of the Federal Capital Territory, where Nigerians who earn their means of livelihood on daily basis and who have been locked out from their means of subsistence and can no longer withstand the pangs of hunger are becoming restless. All right, key points from that uh, comment by reaction by the PDP spokesperson that the president failed to show leadership, did not address the immediate needs of the people, um, rehashed what he said was the global uh, data and his inability to publish details of the 2.6 million um, people he says uh, his government has taken care of um, with the intervention. What is your reaction to those? Uh, I, I want to for the first time, I agree with uh, Kola Lobodion. Like I said, I said earlier, I expected the president to address the crisis created by the sharing, the palliative that they shared before. You know, the back and forth, even with the National Assembly, the Ministry for Humanitarian Affairs, and the fact that the people cannot be identified, and the crisis that they deeply that sharing. All of that was not addressed. It's like pouring money in, in a well, in an ocean. You poured some, and it's like pouring a pouring bitter in a flowing river. You poured some, and then people said they didn't see the effect. It's okay, don't worry. Instead of you to address what led to not feeling the effect, it's okay, don't worry, we'll pour another one million. That's what happened there. But I also want to challenge... The PDP government, gov, uh, PDP as a party, I want what, with what Kola has read out, I want to challenge them uh, to use the state governed by the PDP to at least give us a roadmap with what he has read out, the palliative and I should be done. Let the states like River State and Co. lead the, the trend in sharing palliative, in teaching the federal government how this issue can be addressed. It is not enough to just come and, you know, punch hole on the president's speech. The governors are the, are the government that is closest to the people. All right. And that's why I think that this thing can be properly managed from the government, go, at the state level, if properly handled. If you remember on this, the, the Lagos State government had a, a partial lockdown arrangement in place, while at the same time they were tracking, you know, contact before the federal government blanket uh, lockdown. That lock, that partial lockdown by the Lagos State government, there were no, there were complaints, but it was not as heightened as we have it now. And so, with all of the issues I have identified, there are offices that are not functional, workers that are not going to work, not because they don't want to go to work, but because the government has said, sit back at home. And so if that happens, what happens to their salaries? Can their salaries be paid when there is no work? And if their salaries are not paid, and with the stock that they have, they have kept at home for two weeks, if those stock is exhausted, how are they going to restock with no more money? So what you're right, going to have, you're going to have more hungry people added to the already hungry ones. All right, Barrister, I'm, I'm afraid that's all we can take. Thank you very much for joining us on the news. My pleasure, my pleasure.